I'm about to show you how I turn one video camera into multiple shots in Resolve. Then I'll teach you my magic trick as those virtual cameras are each treated as real individual cameras in Multicam Editor. I've already done my white balance here. Let's jump over. I've already gone to my shot and corrected my white balance using the Doppler and I've added a little bit of gain and uh, adjusted the offset so that my colors are pretty good and everything looks good. Um, but I do need to, now I've pulled back on the things like the mid detail. Uh, I've reset that to default because there are now two people that I'm working with and I'm gonna have three camera shots inevitably. So I wanna show you how to do that in a multi-cam scenario. It's a little bit different. Also, you'll notice that I've removed the vignette because we don't want a vignette that's kind of weird when it punches in on Jeff's camera and there's only half of a vignette because it was on the wrong shot. So, so let's get started with this. Um, so first thing I wanna do is, well, you notice that the audio tracks are connected to my video. And so I'm gonna right click and unlink that so that my video track is independent. That's so that when I switch cameras on my virtual cameras, I'm not gonna have it going in and out of the audio. So um, first thing I wanna do is kind of punch in and set my framing the way that I want it for, for my wide shot. Um, so this is gonna be my baseline, Jeff just the, the shot that we're gonna use when we're both talking, basically. Right. And so I set the frame and then I just kind of skim forward a little bit, make sure that we don't move too far out of it. And that looks pretty good to me. The yeah. framing looks good. So that's really, really simple as far as framing goes. But now uh, we're not gonna add a vignette yet, but we do want to do the facial retouching that I showed you last time. So I'm gonna first create a parallel node for Jeff and we're gonna add uh, facial tracking for you. Once we've got you on there, there we go. Now let's bring down your mid detail. Uh, first of all, let's zoom in a little bit so that we can see what we're, what we're actually accomplishing here. Ready, Jeff? I am ready. Here we go. Photoshopping you by just dragging down my mid detail. Just want to pull out any blemishes? I should start with me so that you're not offended. <laughs> Look at you with your perfect complexion. Oh, I don't know about <laughs> that, but I'll take it. All right. Uh, okay, so now just frame his face here a little bit better. Yeah, the other one was too wide. I'm trying to lose weight. Hey, now. <laughs> now it's okay to go outside, but you don't want to go inside because you're going to lose some detail on the, on the edges or have too much detail where you don't want it. Uh, okay, so now we're going to do facial tracking for Jeff. So what do we want? We want pan, tilt, probably not zoom because the stationary camera is not going to be going in and out. It's, it's where it is. Uh, rotate is not necessary and definitely not 3D. And let's rewind the track and start tracking Jeff. Okay, you're done, Jeff. Excellent. Beautified for the entire video. So now you'll see, Jeff, if I, I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. Now, if I skim, see how that thing follows your face? Oh yeah, And it's okay. actually doing the touch up on your face there. So I wanna do the same thing to me. I'm gonna rewind to the very beginning of the video. I'm gonna create another uh, parallel node, Alt-P, and highlight that and add a circle. Now, you copied from my file instead of the main file. Does that matter? How do you mean I copied? Well, you, so you- I created a parallel node. So right, I haven't, but it, I haven't do, we're doing color correction. There's no files involved in this. No, I understand. But you did a, you created a parallel file off of mine. So does that mean yours is also oh, gonna have my- No, this is parallel. So it's it's like layered effects. Ah, okay. So I'm, I'm adding effects to the shot and my main shot is this guy up here. Oh, okay. So that everything sense, that right. I add to it is being added to that. Ah, that makes sense. Yeah. So I'm gonna put this around my face just like we did with Jeff. Let's get in there so you can see how much of a difference I'm actually making on my noggin. There nice we go. noggin. Yeah, there it is. This is bald and shiny. All right, get it around there. Make sure we're at the very beginning of the track. I mean, you don't have to, you can do reverse tracking as well. But because I've lined it up to the beginning of the track, because see, if, if my face moves, I would need to change the positioning. Um, so there it is, it's nicely lined up. And we're gonna go into tracking and hit play. Not the normal play, but this play for tracking. And that's actually tracking me. Notice that the settings are the same as Jeff's because I haven't changed them. 
if I zoom out, it just continues to track. So all I'm doing here is basically touching up my face. So okay. I haven't yet. All I've done is tracked it. With Jeff, I, I did it on the like in real time. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to adjust my mid detail and see how it's kind of removed the blemishes from my face without blurring it, without making it look mm -hmm. uh, overly falsified. And now that we have those two tracking tracks, look at how perfect our complexion looks. We are just a stunning group of people. Looking see good. that? So there's Jeff's, there's mine. Now we're ready to create our individual camera shots. Why did I do that on the, on the wide shot? Well, this way I don't have to retrack on each of our individual zoomed in cameras. Right. So now I've got this baseline to work with that I can duplicate and just change the zoom level for the camera. So I'm gonna jump back here and now I'm gonna copy this with Control C. I'm just gonna jump over here, Control V, and then pop it onto the first uh, additional video track. So now I have two videos that are identical, but see if I zoom in on this one, I'm gonna bring this up to just a little more than two, uh, let's say 2.3 and bring this over to Jeff. And this is now Jeff's camera shot, okay? So if I turn off that shot, it's gonna be back at our wide shot. See that? Okay. Not the greatest shot, there we go. Let's find one where we're both smiling. Probably need Oh, I like that. It's a good one. <laughs> there we go. Over to Jeff, wide shot. So the wide shot's great for when we're both talking and then when Jeff is talking and then I need one for me too. So because I wanna keep the same zoom level, it's really, really easy just to copy Jeff's track and then paste mine. And on mine, I'm just gonna simply move the position to me. I wanna get, see that thing on the top right? I wanna crop that out. So I'm gonna kinda of position it like that. I can still see the shadow, but I'm not overly concerned, especially because my what is gonna cover that? Vignette. Uh-huh. So there we go. All right, so now we're set and ready to do vignettes. So we've got our wide shot, we've got our Jeff shot, and we've got our Robbie shot. So let's start with our wide shot. I'm gonna click here, and now I'm gonna add a new serial node, and this is going to add to our main shot, and we're gonna create a vignette. So we do that by adding a circle, and we're gonna make that big. Basically consider that this is the lens of your camera, uh, so we want it to be as big as the shot. And then we're going to feather the edge a little bit with this red one here, just like that. Now I'm going to uh, decrease the gain. And you'll notice that it's making the whole shot really, really dark. And that I did on purpose so that I could show you what it's actually doing, because now when I invert that selection, it's just doing that on the outside of the circle. Right. See that? So we've got this nice vignette on the outside. So I'm going to do the same thing on... Jeff's shot. So let's jump over here and bring up his color correction. Notice how it's created another copy here, but it's not got the vignette because I'm working on Jeff's shot and I haven't yet added a vignette to Jeff's shot. So on Jeff's shot, we're going to create a serial node. Oh, not there. We want to highlight that and put it there and add a circle. And Jeff, you know what to do. That's right. You go to the edges of the camera. Yeah, there we and go. And then you want to Feather pull your feathering bit. out. Yeah, just a bit. Adjust your gain. And we're going to invert and lower the gain. See what we're doing there? Look at that. Beautiful. All right, now next up is Robbie. As soon as I have enabled that shot, now when I jump over to my color correction, you see that there's a Robbie shot. So highlight that, Alt-S for add a serial node, add my circle, make it approximately the same size. I want to hide that shadow that's on the right hand side there from the drape system and add some feather and keep me right in the center of that and invert and lower the gain on the edges. There we go. So now we've got these beautiful vignettes for all of our shots. Look at how already that just looks so much more professional, AJ. Yes, it does. Beautiful. Okay, save your work. And now what we wanna do is create the magic. Because now we've got these three shots and you could go old school if you want to and start editing those all by yourself and cutting out pieces and but changing- But that's your, extra time. Oh my goodness. No, we wanna make this super 
brutally easy. So what I'm actually going to do is uh, I'm just gonna right click on my ISO shot. So this is the actual camera file in my media uh, browser here, my media pool. I'm gonna right click and go create new multicam clip using selected clips. And you can name it if you want. I'm just gonna hit okay. And now if I right click and open that in my timeline, oh, so notice, uh, sorry, um, this one has a little icon on the bottom left. So that is my multicam shot. This is the actual file. So the multicam shot, I wanna right click on and open in timeline. And it looks like this. So it's basically reverted the shot to the original shot, which we don't want. So what am I gonna do? Highlight and delete. Now back at my main timeline where I created those three camera shots, I'm gonna open that one in my timeline and I'm gonna cut those three camera shots that I created. I'm gonna go back to my new multicam shot, open that one in my timeline and paste it in. There we go. So now we have a multicam um, shot that has these three cameras. I'm gonna call mine Robbie. So that's Robbie, okay, when it's on. This one is Jeff, and this one is wide, okay? Now I'm gonna jump back to my main timeline, and you'll see that there's no video because I deleted it. I moved it to this multicam shot here. So I'm gonna turn off my inspector, change the view mode to multicam, and you'll see that we've now got two black windows. We've got no video whatsoever, but now I'm gonna drag this multicam shot down into my timeline, now it's, all, it's already timed to my, um, to my audio, um, so I don't have to worry about that. Um, you may need to line that up if you've manipulated that. Now, I need to make sure that I have just video selected because I don't want it to do anything with my audio, just video. So that's at the bottom here. And now with this, uh, with this multicam shot uh, highlighted, Jeff, I'm gonna hit play, okay? okay? Now watch what happens as we're talking. So we're talking, 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 and all of these shots are moving. Right. You can see the vignette over you, you can see the vignette over me, and now as I'm talking, I can actually click, and it will change the camera shot, okay? So if oh, you're- Okay, and down in your timeline, it's doing edit points. I wanna show you that in just a moment. So as I'm talking, here we go. Now watch, here comes Jeff, right? So I can switch back and forth, but then when we're both talking, I click on the wide shot and it switches back. And as you say, Jeff, what it's actually done is it placed the edit point on my timeline. Okay. So now, if I go back to Inspector and just play my video, this is what it looks like. I'm gonna just fast forward a bit. Here comes a switch, see that? Wow. The switches are right like that. So you can actually control the camera shot. There's our fuzz. Just by clicking on that timeline uh, to the uh, multi-cam editor here. And you can have as many cameras as you want, presumably. I mean, I think it supports something like 16, somewhere around that. But so you, you can do it that easily. Now to take it one step further, Jeff, you can use your keyboard. What? How? Wide is one, Jeff is two, Robbie is three. So now if I press play, it's gonna play just like it is, and notice it's replaying everything at the top left as well. Now I'm gonna push three. Oh no, two, because you're talking. So I pushed two on my keyboard, now I'm pushing three. So I'm actually pushing the keys on my keyboard okay. to switch. So I can do it really, really quickly, and I can just sit back and I can be doing my editing like this. That's amazing. Now if you mess up here, like you've got all the edit points. Right. So, Do oh, Jeff is talking. Oh no, oh no, but I still pointed at Robbie. So what I can do is I can either rewind, push play, and then press two to switch to Jeff, or I can go back to my traditional editing mode, which is to say clip like that. And then I can right click on it and I can go switch multicam clip to Jeff. Oh, that's amazing. So a couple of different ways you can correct that. Awesome. Yeah. So there you have it folks, multicam editing with vignetting on each of your virtual cameras right in DaVinci Resolve. Remember, DaVinci Resolve is available to you free of charge. You don't have to have the studio version until you have to have the studio version. 
I always say like start with the free version and do all this stuff until you need more. That's right.